Welcome, welcome to Life Simple 7 Challenge, day number two. I am super excited to be your host. I am Nakedra Brown, the nurse practitioner who teaches and trains you on ways to get and stay healthy. I am with Zing Life Services, who is actually doing this challenge because we are committed to improving the quality of life within the community. We wanted you to know the simple steps you can take to improve your life. So you should have gotten day one on yesterday, which was all about how to be more active. We went into detail about how much exercise you should get, how to break that down. And so I still want to hear from you what challenge you're giving yourself. How are you going to challenge yourself the rest of this week and even the rest of the month to get the exercise that you need? Because the first thing you need to do in Life Simple 7 is to be more active, to improve your exercise. The next thing we're going to talk about today, the second thing is to eat better. Common sense, right? So I said that this is not going to be rocket science, but I'm going to give you some information that you may not have had opportunity to think about give you some information so that you are able to process it, to put it all together and see how you can take steps to improve your life. Because if you have the information but no plan, that's why you never take action. So again, we get most of our information from the American Heart Association. We are strongly associated with them because we teach CPR and first aid classes. We are all about the heart. We recognize that the heart is the battery for the body and next we do a lot of brain health or stroke education and so because of that you'll see a lot of the handouts that we use are from the american heart association you should get a pdf and a handout each day that you can print off to use as your guide with these videos to help you be able to better understand and to make some notes about what it is you need to do so the first step is you need to learn what the American Heart Association recommends. We talk about a healthy diet, but most of the time people don't understand what they should be including in their diet. So we went to a my plate format as opposed to the pyramid. How many of you remember the food pyramid? So instead of the food pyramid, it's actually a my plate. And Zing Life Services has talked about my plate extensively um, during some of the lives at night where we do our health education. So I'm just going to tell you about how many you need from each food group per day. And again, it's on your list. So what you need to do or what your challenge is, is to create a food diary. There are many apps that do this. You just have to make sure you put the food in the app. The app doesn't know what you're eating, right? So there are many food, um, excuse me, there are many apps that you can download to add the food that you're eating. But even predating apps, you can always just write it down. Paper and pencil never goes out of style. So you can always just write down what you're eating, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and don't forget to include what you are drinking. So your AHA healthy eating pattern is for 2,000 calories per day. Most of your apps will also add in your height, your weight, and your goal. So it will figure out how many calories you need in a day to get to your goal. So that's the purpose of having the app. It does some of that work for you versus paper and pencil. You're pretty much just getting what you're putting down and you have to figure out calorie intake on your own. And so the U.S. eating style pattern is for 2,000 calories per day. And so if you want to lose weight, imagine what you need to do with your calories. They need to go down. For those people who want to gain weight, and yes, there are some people who want to gain weight, imagine what you need to do with your calories. They need to go up. And so the apps also will help you figure out based on your age, your activity, whether you're trying to lose or gain weight, what and how much food intake you can take per day. The one I use is called Lose It, L-O-S-E, next word, it. Um, and so I can input the food that I eat. If you're in the store or the, there are barcodes, you can scan the food and it adds it right in. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. But again, my hard part is actually putting the food into the app. So I know if that's a struggle for me. I know I'm not alone. I know that may be a struggle for you too. So commit this week to keeping your food diary. This is Wednesday. So commit to keeping a food diary at least for the rest of the week. So that you are able to see, excuse me, it's not Wednesday, it is Monday. I'm recording this on Wednesday, but by the time you see this, it will be Monday. 
And so you can record your food for the rest of the week. And so you will be able to see what you're eating. If you're eating more than your calories, less. I would advise you this week to just put in everything that you're eating. Don't really make any real adjustments so that you have a baseline. If you're eating 2,500 calories per day, you know that you will need to decrease some things. At the end of the week, you'll have a baseline in terms of how much you need to scale back. You can look at what you're eating and see what it is you need to scale back. It gives you something other than just in your mind saying, I should probably eat less or I shouldn't eat that. It'll give you an idea. You probably didn't think some of the things that you were eating had that much calories. I ate a piece of pizza the other day and that piece of pizza had 275 calories in one slice. I rarely eat pizza, but my kids had it and y'all know how it goes. So I ate a piece, one piece, 275 calories. The app allowed me to put in the kind of pizza it is, where I got it from, and that's how it calculated the calories. Now, of course, give or take, pieces are smaller, larger, but as a general rule, it was 275 calories. So you eat two pieces of pizza. How many pieces of pizza do you generally eat? If you eat two pieces of pizza, you add 275 times two. So that's how your calories add up. And then you probably eat something with the pizza. Um, and so that's how those little things will add up and you don't even realize it. So let's talk quickly about what you should be eating. Your vegetables, your fruits, grains, dairy, proteins, and oils. Now, I know you all know what vegetables are. I know you know what vegetables are. We push green vegetables. They have so many nutrients in them, so many properties to help generate your cells and your body. So vegetables come fresh. They come frozen, they come canned, or you can get them in a jar um, or dried. You're going to need five servings of vegetables per day. Five. So your vegetables are high up on your list. What's your favorite type of vegetable? What is your favorite type of vegetable? Mine are green beans. Um, green beans. I don't like a lot of beans, so green beans are probably my favorite. Um, so you need to eat vegetables and at least five servings per day. Next, right under that, we have fruit. So fruit, you need four servings. So if you can remember five, four for fruit. Fruit it also comes in fresh, frozen, canned, and dried. Of course, now the more natural, which is fresh, that you get, you decrease preservatives, you decrease added sugars, you decrease things that are added to the fruit to make it less healthy. So when at all possible, you want to eat fresh. Frozen typically is better than canned uh, because canned usually has a lot of salt and preservatives. So just be mindful that your vegetables, you need five servings, and your fruit, you need four. Grains need about six servings, and they should be whole grains. So about half of them should be whole grains. That's another conversation about grains, how to pick them, what it means, but just know whole grains are important. Uh, white versus wheat. So you can see some of that on your bread, on different things that you eat, cereals, and they talk about whole grains. Whole grains are important. Think about oatmeal. Uh, think about things of that nature. So whole grains are important. Dairy. Dairy, you need three servings of dairy per day and not ice cream, right? So you think about um, low fat and fat free would be best only because we know the fat content in those raise your cholesterol. So dairy, you need three servings of dairy. Proteins, proteins you need two. So you get proteins from mostly meat, but also seeds, nuts, beans, um, and eggs have protein. So I generally eat a boiled egg every morning for breakfast. Um, and then I also, when I eat my oatmeal, which is a grain, I put either some sunflower seeds um, or some almonds. I get this combination of a cranberry mix. So it has cranberries, raisins, um, sunflower seeds, and almonds in it. And so I put just a teaspoon, excuse me, a tablespoon. I put a tablespoon of that in my oatmeal. And there I have my protein already, um, part, part of it, for the day. So it's my eggs in the morning and then my my seeds, and nuts. If you eat nuts, they're a good snack. They also help you with your protein, which helps you to keep your satiety level or to stay full longer. 
so that you don't eat and then like, oh, I'm still hungry type thing. Oils, polyunsaturated and monosaturated. So saturated fats you want to stay away from. You want polyunsaturated and monosaturated and you should have three tablespoons of oils. So knowing what to eat, how much to eat, and actually when to eat is also important. Um, I have decided that my largest meal of the day is not going to be traditionally at night um, because metabolism for me decreases some at night. Um, and so you can think about this as well. Are you eating large meals and then going straight to bed? Or are you eating your larger meal during the day when you're actually still up and moving around and then switching to having something lighter at night? Think about what you're eating, when you're eating, and how you're eating it. Is it fried? Is it fast? Is it something that you cook? Is it leftover? Are you prepping it? So your challenge for this week is to download a food log if you don't already have one, again, I use Lose It, but there are various other ones depending upon your device you can download and enter your food diary for what you are eating this week. Go ahead and eat your normal, what you would eat, and then at the end of the week, take inventory of how many calories you are using. Now, yesterday we talked about being active and your challenge from yesterday is to incorporate some activity into your routine. So you see how this works? Yesterday, you get active, you incorporate exercise. Today, you're downloading your um, app and you're going to start inputting the exercise into your app as well. So you'll be able to see, okay, I walked for 30 minutes. That decreased 50 calories. So you can put your walking into your app and you can see how it changes, how much you can eat. It will also tell you what exercise you can do gives you more bang for your buck. We talked about moderate intensity and we talked about vigorous exercise on yesterday. So it'll show you how it impacts your cal caloric intake and how it impacts you overall. So that's how this challenge is going to build one day after the next. Yesterday we talked about exercise. You challenge yourself to start exercising to figure out how you can fit into your routine Today, you take that exercise and you start plugging it into this app that you are going to use this week to help your food log. I also want you to start reading your food labels. Understand what things are in your food labels. The more simple, we're getting to simple, the more simplistic your food label is, the better. So what I try to do is, stop, is to eat things that have three or less additives in the ingredients. That can be complicated. I know you're like, oh my gosh, what does that mean? So if I look on the back of a food label and it's got more than three ingredients, I'm probably not going to eat it. That's just me. Um, only because where I am, I was already eating relatively healthy, um, but I still had a major health event. And so for me, that's just an additional change that I need to do to try to ramp up on um, what I'm already doing. So it means I eat a lot of fresh things. It means that I eat a lot of vegetables. It means I eat a lot of meat, um, and so I don't eat a lot of things. So that pizza the other day was something that I traditionally don't eat. I haven't eaten in months um, just because of the fact that I'm trying to eat things that have less than three ingredients. Why three? It's just because the majority of things um, that have a lot of preservatives, that have a lot of sugars, um, that have they have more than three ingredients. And so I'm trying to stay on the more natural side. So what you need to do, though, is to figure out how to read your food labels. So you'll know about these oils and saturated fats that we're talking about. So you'll know about sodium intake. So you'll know just what include how many calories is also important. The tricky thing about food labels is that you have to look at the serving size. That's a trick. Because you might look at it and you'll say, oh, this bag of potato chips is only... 80 calories. Well, the serving size is a half bag. So if you eat the entire bag, you're going to get 160 calories. That happens a lot. You'll get something with two in it and they'll say, this, you know, there's 100 calories in it. But the serving size is one. That means you have to multiply by two to get the full serving size. Sometimes the serving size is a quarter size. Then you have to multiply by four. So be careful and look at your labels and see your serving size. So the handout you're going to get is going to have an example here. And you can see the serving size 
Every nutrition label has one. You'll see the calories, and then you'll start seeing other information. For So for this, the serving size is two-third cup. I'm not sure what it was they were measuring out, but the serving size is two-third cup. So not a full cup, but two-thirds of a cup. And it's 230 calories. And so you have to be mindful that it's not a whole cup. So you don't get a whole cup of that. You get two-thirds of a cup for your 230 calories. So that's what you want to try to do is start looking at your food label, learning how to read and understand the food label. You just start learning one thing and then you add to that. You know, it's, it's a process. You want to start limiting sugary drinks, sweets, fat, processed meat, salty foods, and highly processed foods. Again, that goes back to trying to eat things that are um, limited to three ingredients or less. This time of year, summertime of year is a little bit easier, at least it is for me, because there's always fresh food. I can go to my hometown. I can get food from the garden. Um, it seems to be a bit easier. Things are in season, and so... Just try to figure out what it is you need to eat and eat in season. You want to avoid excessive calories, tropical oils, and high hydrogenated oils. Avoid those things. So lastly, tips for success. Again, your challenge, you can be doing that while you're listening to me, is to download an app if you don't have one already and to start with your food intake. Make sure you're putting your food intake in, in everything you eat. Even water, everything you drink goes into your intake for the rest of this week. And then you're going to do inventory at the end of this challenge to see how much calories you're actually consuming. You're going to add from yesterday your activity into this app so that you can start tracking how much activity you are bringing because you're supposed to be setting a goal of increasing your activity. So go ahead and start putting that if you're exercising for 10 minutes. Go ahead and put it in your app along with your food. It should allow you to do that. Tips for success. You're going to have to watch your calories. Cooking at home is a big one. Look for the heart health check and learn the salty six. So watching for calories. So you want to eat only as many calories as you use during your physical activity. So again, your apps are going to be helpful for this because you can put your height, your weight in, and see what your goal is for weight loss, and it'll tell you how many calories you want um, to lose, excuse me, how many calories you want to get per day. Be realistic with your weight loss. Sometimes your calorie restriction is going to be a little much for you at first based on the app, only because it's something that's new. Um, and so you want to take gradual. 2,000 calories is what the baseline is. Less than that means you want, you're going to lose weight. More than that means you gain weight. Um, and so be realistic with what you want to do. Start watching your calories. Cook at home. That requires some planning because you have to go to the store. You have to have time. You have to prepare. But there is value in cooking at home because you're able to understand what's actually in the food. Is it processed food? What are the ingredients that you're using? And it is actually better for you than eating out. Even things like you said, oh, I, I ate a salad. There, there's still some degree of the meat that they use on top of those salads versus chicken that you cook at home. So take control of your nutritional content by learning healthy preparation methods. So make sure you prepare food at home, but when you prepare it at home, make sure you prepare it in a healthy manner. You want to look for the heart check. So heart health, you'll see it. I eat Cheerios, I eat oatmeal, so those are going to have heart health checks on them. And it helps you find foods that are part of the healthy eating plan. So that's how you'll know that these foods are helpful for the heart. And so they are part of the healthy eating plan. The salty six, I bet you didn't know this. So we also talk about preservatives and we talk about salt. Salt is going to increase your blood pressure and do any other things to your body. So limit the amount of sodium that you're eating. You're going to learn the salty six. Sodium is one of those things you should be looking at on your food label. Um, so that you will know what things have more salt in them and what don't. The salty six, as indicated here, are cold cuts and cured meats. So that's like your deli meats, and that's also like your, um, mm, the name just escaped me, but it, it comes wrapped, and it's a piece of dried meat. It's typically long. I can't think of it, but y'all know what it is. That's a cured meat. Pizza, 
soup. It's going to be soup that comes in a can, right? Typically. Breads and rolls, sandwiches, burritos, and tacos. Typically are salty sick. So cold cuts and cured meat, pizza, soups, breads and rolls, sandwiches, burritos, and tacos. So pizza is included in that. Where you want to stay away from because it has a lot of sodium. Typically excess sodium. And so this is our conversation for the second day of the Life Simple 7 Challenge. We have talked about how to eat better. You're going to join us tonight for the Q&A session at 9 p.m. You should have instructions on where that is, how to join in your email as well. If you have any questions, you can ask them there. Again, I am not a nutritionist, but I do have some basic information as it relates to how to eat, and I can tell you what I do that has been helpful for my lifestyle. So the main thing you need to do today, your challenge is to download your app, go ahead and start putting your food in, incorporate your exercise from the challenge on yesterday, and then we're going to keep building on this thing. Print your handout out if you haven't already, because this is going to be helpful for you to be able to look at, and it goes through just everything I've already talked about. So these are going to be your notes that you can use. You can start identifying what you need to do better on. Do you need to start reading your food labels? Do you need to watch your calories? Do you eat out a lot? What is it that you need to change? Remember, it's small steps to a big reward. So this has been day two of the Life Simple 7 Challenge. If you know people who need to participate in this challenge, Go ahead and tell them to sign up on bit.ly slash life simple seven. We'd love to have them join for the rest of the challenge and make sure that you are committing yourself to taking the challenge every day. We're going to add on to the challenge day by day so that the goal is at the end. You have a plan. You have a plan on how you are going to be impactful for your own health. You can listen at me talk all day long all night long, but unless you have a plan of what you need to do, you're going to be the only one who can change you. So we will see you for the Q&A tonight, and then tomorrow you'll get another of Life Simple 7. Keep it simple. Bye.